Hi, I'm Dr. Mike Evans, and welcome to this visual lecture I'm calling 23 and a half hours. I want to know what comes first. What, what, what has the biggest impact? What has the biggest return on investment? What makes the biggest difference to your health? So I did my research, and I, I found an answer, at least for me, and it's tricky because, you know, all these things are sort of overlapping. Uh, but I picked out this intervention, and because of its breadth, uh, it worked for so many different health problems, and that's what I found so cool about it. So just to kind of walk you through a quick list. Sorry to interrupt that. Uh, Lucien said that I couldn't run it too far because that would come into my time for my talk. So you'll have to look on uh, uh, Google. Um, so I'm a family doctor from Canada, and I like to make things. And when I sit in my clinic, I'm often thinking, is this viral or is this bacterial? And in my other job, uh, running what we call the health design lab, where I try and make sort of engaging media for, for patients, uh, we ask a different question. How can I make this more infectious? How can I make it more viral or even more bacterial? How can we engender or how can we engage peer-to-peer -peer healthcare? So to step back for a second, that video that you just saw, uh, I built it with a fantastic uh, filmmaker, an old friend named Nick DePontier, a great illustrator uh, named Lisa Sorza. The kids on my hockey team think I drew it. Uh, uh, and a great uh, editor named Dave Schmidt. And we kind of combined forces, uh, sat in a film studio for a day, and, uh, and shot that. And then um, a, a lot of my life revolves around hockey rinks. We have five hockey players in our family. So I was sitting in a cold arena at the beginning of December, and I thought, oh, I'll put this on YouTube, see if anybody likes it. Uh, so I put it on a Monday, and then on the Wednesday, I showed my 14-year-old daughter, who I'm obviously trying to impress. I said, I have 320 views. Check it out. And uh, she sort of patted me on the back and uh, uh, kept moving. Uh, uh, anyways, long story short, uh, here we are a few months later, almost two and a half million people have watched the video. 25,000 people watch it every day. Over a million people in the US have watched it, 500,000 in Canada, almost 50,000 people in India, uh, almost 20,000 uh, people here in the Netherlands. Uh, it's an incredible, incredible uh, opportunity and what I would call a healthy virus. But just to step back for a second, uh, this is a, a great study uh, by Larry Green and, and, uh, and colleagues, and it looks at where care happens. And when we think of where, uh, when we want to improve care, we think, oh, well, let's improve the emergency room or the hospital or the clinic. Uh, but actually, over two-thirds of care happens at home. And we do a very, very poor job of, of supporting that and investing in that. So to do that, uh, in, in my job as a doctor, we've learned that if we have a team, we actually take better care, what we call interdisciplinary care, especially for complex problems. Uh, if we want to create stuff for the emerging ways that people solve their healthcare problems, so we do have to have the clinicians and patients, uh, but in my world, we combine them, and we combine them uh, with the group that I would call creatives. Uh, so filmmakers and, and designers, people thinking about uh, how people experience the world. Um, and in that, in that setting, we create a buffet of kind of self-serve health media. And the reason why we use the, the, the self-serve concept is I think we've been making patient education for this person in the center. The person in the center is an amalgamation of all the people around the outside. But if you look at the bottom of this, look at the four bottom people of, of this. They would solve their health problems, they would understand things, their levers for change, the ways they sustain change over time, all completely different. The two people in the center at the top, two older people. I, I saw a Scottish guy the other day in clinic, and he, and he was a really healthy, fit guy, and we we're talking about his cholesterol, and I go, hey, are you on the web? And he goes, oh, Christia. Yeah. And uh, I go, Have you, you should see this thing 23 and a half hours. He goes, oh, Chris, I've seen it like three times. That doctor, Mike Evans, he's fantastic. <laughs> and uh, uh, so clearly I'm better in the drawn form. Uh, but, you know, we make suppositions, you know, that older people, so a third of, uh, of the over 70 crowd are online. Those that are online are heavy users, and it's the fastest growing group. Uh, so we have to rethink how we engage uh, uh, the patients where they are. And I think when you, when you engage patients, you want to think about three things. I spent a lot of my life summarizing data, and I think that's not the way. Stories trump data. I think relationships trump stories. And I think in a lot of ways, 
uh, individuals trump uh, um, organizations. So this is uh, Janet Bel Rey, and um, we did a film series called The Truth of It, uh, where we had this fantastic filmmaker named Wendy Rowland go to 40 different uh, uh, people across Canada, and it was around psychosocial issues and cancer. Um, uh, Janet is about my age, and she has uh, two small kids, and she was diagnosed with uh, uh, very bad breast cancer, and she just uh, died uh, a couple of months ago. Um, and it, it sort of seems unfair, but she's left a, a legacy for us because she was incredibly thoughtful and incredibly uh, uh, well-researched. And so in this series, we sort of set it up like a TED Talk. We had many people talking about how to tell your kids you have cancer, body image, so on and so forth. And she uh, was an incredible patient expert at how to tell your kids you have cancer. Uh, these are her two kids here. And so in all these things, uh, the patients are much smarter than you or I, even if that's our feel. And, and the stuff they come up with is much more real and more useful. Imagine being in that situation where you had to tell your young kids you had cancer. Uh, would you rather a pamphlet or Janet? And so I think we have to connect these people uh, and these resources over time. Uh, the second thing is around relationships. And what happened with 23 and a half hours is people got tribal about it. Uh, they discussed their stories uh, they, about their victories and their losses. We had over 1,000 comments. We have 17,000 people put it on their Facebook page. Many, many more thousands send it to their friends and uh, uh, family. Uh, and it's part, when you're a part of a tribe, it's more than, than, uh, than just showing up. You have to participate. And in our tribe, uh, we have uh, people from seven different countries actually translating 23 and a half hours uh, into seven different languages. We just put this up at a hockey rink on December, and this is all that's happening. So there's an incredible opportunity to engage your tribe, the tribe that you're interested in. This is my last theme, and you know, when I'm in clinic and I don't know what's going on, I'll look at the residents and I'll go, we gotta do a gropogram, what we call a gropogram. And it's me when I do this sort of blind testing, it's not very good and it's not a great way to go. But I feel like that's what the public does with the kind of blind Google search. You don't know what you're getting. There's no quality control. So I actually think a big theme, and a lot of people ask me, where can I start? Well, if you're an expert patient or an expert clinician, start with curation. Here's an example of uh, uh, what we call hand-picked health, where we just set up a J slider, and we put uh, the best websites, the best pamphlets, the best books, uh, the best apps. So this is for concussions. We create another visual lecture around that. So I think we can... Uh, capture all that and put it in one place. So I think there's an old way to do patient education, which is fine, it's still okay. Put, in a we we put it on your website, put it in the waiting room. But I think there's a new way of doing it where you co-design it with patients and let them uh, distribute themselves. When it comes from somebody they love, it's so much more powerful. So this is my last slide. So make things with other people. It uh, sounds a bit sexy, but I do think you have to be a bit sexy. Uh, Peter uh, Norv Morville's great uh, honeycomb. You have to think about all these things. In medicine, we just think about one or two of these things, but you have to think about all these things. But I'd actually think about one question. Is what you're making infectious? Will somebody send it to a loved one? Thank you very much.